Welcome back. This is where we left off from the previous one. Um, and as much as I'd like to tell you that this is going to be a really uh, transforming stream for the piece, it's, it's really not. Um, this is the one that I was doing most of the cleanup, fixing line work, uh, just making sure that everything is well before I move on to adding more elements than the elements that I have. As also the one that I add texture to the trees and the texture I'm using here is really just based on high contrast leaf shapes. I end up not liking this all that much, but it serves its purpose right now. So even though the piece isn't finished and the trees aren't finished, if you can get things to look as close to what they will look in the end, you can sort of evaluate where you're going a little bit better, right? So you have a better understanding of where you're going. So for example, that's why I always had three shapes on the trees or th three uh, shades on the treetops so that I get my range of colors. I added another one there on this main tree. This tree is supposed to be growing inside of the castle. It doesn't really look like that right now because the, the canopy is not overlapping the stones of the wall of the tower on the center of the castle, but they will. Uh, but right now, what I'm doing is I'm just gradually adding that texture so that they look a little cleaner. And I'm also sort of testing whether or not I'll be able to do something really quick and be able to stick with this texture or if I'm going to have to redo the texture later on. Uh, and I'll probably have to redo uh, the texture uh, later on. Well, not probably, I know, because I'm recording this after. Uh, so on this side, we get this sort of yellowish grass. It looks like slightly dry grass. And, and that's a result of my color palette, which for the grass, I didn't really go for a really bright green because I kind of wanted that sort of sunny uh, feeling uh, uh, of the grass. And most of the colors are relative anyway. So as long as I had that blue and as long as I had that sort of warm earth tones on the stone, the grass would still be a yellowish green. So I was fine with that. Uh, but the the battle here is whether I add detail by creating those clumps of grass or the sort of bushes everywhere, or should I have those sort of shapes of shadow details where some grass blades will poke out of the shadow and become lit or uh, in some cases where the shadow starts to, to, to show, will there be a, a shadowy grassy blade poking through the light one? So there's a clash between these two things. And eventually I, I solve these kind of solving by adding more elements to the scene and kind of distracting from that. Uh, but there's a lot of things to be done. The reflections on the water, I, I think in the, in the past years, or I mean, at least in the past couple of years, I've been able to sort of replicate the reflections in the water in a convincing way so it's not like you're going to be looking at the math of my of my reflections and going oh the calculations are wrong but as long as they pass for yeah that, that looks like a reflection uh, i'm happy so i'm also playing here with highlights on this on the on the wood uh, i really did want it to look like a curved bridge um, and for the shapes there on the on the road, I'm using and on the water as well. I'm using my uh, variable thickness pixel brush, which is something that I made um, after discussing with a friend of mine whether or not it would be possible to make a pixel brush that would scale. Because we've tried it before and it didn't work. And then I found that all you need to do is have a four by four pixel sized square used as the the tip. And so I'm using that to really quickly sketch shapes everywhere, like in this tree, for example. Uh, and some of those shapes survive. They eventually become part of the drawing uh, or part of the piece. And I end up not even uh, changing them all that much. I just end up sort of um, cleaning them up a, a little bit, but they, they stay within the image. Um, I kind of feel like using brushes and using dither patterns and stuff on pixel art is kind of... I don't think it's cheating at all. I don't find that it's cheating at all. My my reasoning is always, if this was available 20 years ago for the pixel artists working at Nintendo and Namco and Konami, would have they used it? And usually the answer is yes, of course they would. They wanted to get stuff done as fast as they could. So because these tools are available to us right now, it doesn't mean that we're cheating uh, or that we're offending the original uh, pixel art. We just want to create something that's cool and that people love. And that's the motivation. So dithering and brush sets that uh, have all these sort of uh, wells, bells and whistles. They are cool. The only issue I have with dithering is that it might end up looking like a computer did it, right? It's it's very dehumanizing and it's just something that I feel can, can look risky if you don't do it right. But by all means, experiment everything. 
Uh, the first floor here is going to be a little bit empty. I really did not decide on what I wanted to put there at all. I know that I want to add some characters in, so I'm leaving the open space for that. I kind of wanted this to look like an outpost where soldiers go and rest, uh, but I didn't really want to have to go in and do the sleeping beds or anything. There's going to be a tent on the outside um, as well. But right now, I'm just adding more and more surface details to make sure that everything reads really well. Everything looks uh, and fits within the world. Um, also, uh, I want to I chipped away some details there at the at the walls. This is something that I will do more, as well as I feel it adds to the story of the to the story of the building, so to speak. And I'm playing here with uh, with the colors and shading on suggesting thickness of the wall. So if you look left to the left of the that sort of boarded up section that's what i did so here's me adding the the tent it's a, especially with the isometric grid it's fairly easy to find those shapes even though i'm not really respecting the isometric grid what i was really hoping is that the dark bit on the side of the tent reads as a shadow being cast from the tree and the way that i solve that is that i make sure that the shadow on the tent lines up with the shadow on the ground that way i can justify it that way uh, there's a sleeping uh, bag there and this just sets the tone like this is something temporary they're not going to stay here forever there's not even room for everyone inside so they have to put up tents and that was it for this one i hope you guys enjoyed it and i'll see you on the next one as well take care